What we're looking at here is a four channel Pico scope. This is the uh, heart of the Pico scope here. This is the computer box that goes with it. It's a four channel scope. And I got channels A, B, C, and D. And we're just gonna use the first two channels. They do light up and they're color coordinated. So I have, a, I'll set it up that way so it makes sense to you. We're gonna stick with the colors. So the channel A will be the blue and channel B will be the uh, red. There's also yellow and green for the other two. And then we'll stick with our pins here, the same colors, just so it doesn't get too confusing. But this is our Pico scope, and we're gonna just hook it up here in a quick second. We're going to take our ends here. So this is gonna be the blue end. Again, I'm gonna put a blue probe in it just so it makes sense to us. Same thing here on the ground side. I'm gonna do the blue so it's color coordinated. I'll do the same on the red. plugged in there and then I'm going to hook up the cables to the actual Pico scope itself and you can see how they have this different kind of a fitting on there and that plugs in right up to the Pico scope just like that. I'm going to do the same thing channel B and again this is going to be the red one that's on there just like that. This end a little square looking end here of the USB goes in the Pico scope. Right in the top of the Pico scope, there's where it goes. Just like that, it's plugged in. The other end of the blue wire, this is what's going to hook to the USB port on your laptop. So this is going to work in conjunction and only with a laptop. So we've got the Pico scope and its leads. And we'll connect this to our laptop and we should be ready to go to the uh, next step. Okay, we got our uh, council lab uh, trainer out here. I have the laptop with the Pico software and I'm connected it to my Pico scope. Remember I had to hook the, the Pico scope itself, I had to be hooked to the laptop. So I'm hooked to the laptop. I got my Pico scope program up and running. Now I just need to hook the leads to the council lab. So let's do that. So. We're gonna take the two red, uh, the red lead, uh, channel B, and hook it up to sensor number four, the actual magnetic strip. And what we need to do is uh, the black one needs to go into the ground, and the red lead is gonna go on the signal. So we're gonna put it up here on the signal or actually right down there. So I got a five volt reference signal to this sensor. And then the sensor is gonna send back a signal on the blue side here under this where it says signal. So the red lead goes in the signal, black lead goes in the ground. And then for our uh, uh, channel A, we're gonna go on the uh, analog sensor. We're just gonna go in these two top ones here and make our life simple. Uh, we're set up there so uh, I need to turn the machine on and then down here I need to turn on the 5 volt reference signal so uh, sensor number one will produce a signal without the 5 volt reference signal but the digital one on uh, channel B will not so I need to turn that on and then the RPM here will start the uh, shaft spinning you'll be able to get some readings on your scope. So we'll take a look at those readings uh, in just a minute. All right, we want to uh, turn on the Pico scope software, which is right here. going to see our Pico scope right there. It's loading it up. Now we're not going to need this screen right here, but you can see it's set up for different sensors and uh, tests that you can run. So we're just going to shut that down. Okay, so I have the machine on. You see I got channel A is at 50 millivolts, channel B is at 50 millivolts right down there. You can see I just got both the red and the blue pattern just all over the screen there. So 
I'm hooked up. Let me turn on the council lab. I'm going to turn on the power. I'm going to turn on the 5 volt reference signal. I'm going to turn the uh, motor speed up halfway. This is what I'm getting here right now. So oh. the blue pattern is going to be sensor number one, the analog sensor. And uh, the red pattern is going to be sensor number four, which is the magnetic strip. On the left, I have the voltages for the blue, and on the right, I have the voltages for the red trace. So I'm going to drag the blue down a little bit, just to separate them uh, a little bit. And there we go. So now I want to set these up so we can make some sense of them. I'm going to start out on the uh, blue scale here. I'm just going to hit the top left here. I'm just going to hit the plus, and get the voltage up a little bit, put that up to 10 volts. Now you can see the pattern is still dancing around there, the blue pattern. So I'm going to put a trigger on that one. I'm going to hit that, hit the trigger. Okay. Now the trigger is right here in the middle. I'm going to take it and just drag it over here to the left. I want it to be higher than these little bumps right there. This is going to be my AC signal. I want it a little bit higher than that so it holds it steady right there. And that one's all set. Now on the uh, red pattern here, I want to turn the, the voltage scale up to 5 volts. I'm on the 2 volt scale now. I want to go up to 5 volts. I'm going to click that up a little bit, get a pattern right there see what that looks like. Now the pattern is a little small right there. We could probably go back down to the two volt uh, pattern there, but I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So I want to hit trace B. Then we'll go down here where it says band width limit. I just want to click that button right there. And that's going to clean up my pattern and uh, Actually, I want to do the same thing with trace A. So I'm going to click on A. Bandwidth limit, again, down here to 20 kilohertz. I'm going to click on that. And that's going to clean up the pattern on there. So there we go. That looks pretty good. So you can see on the top pattern here, my digital pattern, just over a volt. And on my uh, analog pattern down here at the bottom, just just a little bit over, so I'm on the blue scale here, just a little bit over, just under 2.2 volts would be that line right there. We're just under that. This is the crankshaft position sensor. The analog sensor is, the blue trace is analog crankshaft position sensor. That's why it's got these big little humps in it right here. In between these two high spots is one revolution of the wheel. That is so the crankshaft uh, position sensor picks that up and the engine knows where cylinder number one is. On a wheel speed sensor you won't have that extra high little spike right there. They're all going to be the same. And then uh, then you're set up. You can get your readings on there.